Welcome back to the podcast that rocks, a weekly podcast that talks about rock and metal news and current events, including my health updates, because I seem to keep on dying when I go to festivals. With me is Go Gretchen. Gretchen, please tell everyone hello. Hello. There we go. Good enough for me. <laughs> Can't even let me do my dad jokes. Okay. Gretchen, say hello. Hello. Yeah, see, doesn't that count? Okay, fine. I know what you want. Say hello, Gretchen. Hello, Gretchen. <laughs> well, now you don't sound enthusiastic at all. No, because you ruined it. Uh, oh, I ruined it, did I? Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, as everyone's mostly aware, if you follow the last episode or two of the podcast that rocked, Gro Gre bleh, Gretchen and I have been getting ready to go to Aftershock in Sacramento, California, a three-day festival headlined by Slipknot, Blink-182, and Tool. It was an event, to say the least. It was a big deal. Full sellout all three days, 40,000 people, massive events in a park in Discovery Park in Sacramento. It was a gorgeous park. However, mm -hmm. if you have even the slightest of breathing issues like myself, you are going to suffer. It is probably the dustiest park in America, unfortunately. And I would go toe to toe and say, if people want to suggest other parks that are that dusty, go to Sacramento. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, Gretchen and I had dust masks, and like she had what? What would you call like your the wrap? What What would you call that for you? A face wrap. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the term is. Like, I have <laughs> I don't, it actually. Yeah. Wrapped. I have an actual filter mask that goes around my, my nose and mouth with a breathable filter that you replace in and out because the dust is so much. I've learned that the past two years. It was so dusty this year that my – first of all, I was not fully recovered from Louder Than Life where the dust bowl and the heat exhaustion there. The heat was not a problem this year at Aftershock. Weather was gorgeous all three days. However, the dust was so much and there were so many people – that I got so bad that at the end of night two, I had to be put on a nebulizer for the first time in my life. And mm -hmm. I was carted back to the media tent and stuck there with all the injured and inebriated and hallucinating people. And we had to be escorted out on a golf cart. Yep. And Gretchen was thrilled and loved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you were... Not having the funnest of times, and I apologize. No, I'm just worried about you. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because that really did ruin a lot of things. I couldn't get going the next day until Sunday. We didn't get there until like about 4 p.m. And we missed a lot of bands. Like I had, couldn't do any interviews on Sunday, which sucked because I had quite a few lined up. However, we still got to see a lot. And we're going to go over some of our favorite things that we noticed on throughout Aftershock. If you were there... And if you're listening to watching this on YouTube, drop a comment. Let us know what your favorite parts of it were. We'll, app, we'll hashtag it and share it out to you so people can comment. Um, I, for one, first of all, we talked about Blink-182 performing at Aftershock and how was, that was the big polarizing band. And Gretchen said her piece on that too. Gretchen, I'll ask you first. What did you think of Blink at Aftershock? I mean, I couldn't really see their stage set up. So I can't really speak on that since I was way off to the side, but I thought they sounded amazing. Okay. Um, they, they took some weird like liberties with some of their songs. And so they didn't sound like, you know, their recordings, but I mean, I guess they are their songs, so yeah. they can do whatever they want with them. Um, but that kind of threw me off a little bit. Cause I mean, when you are used to something and you like it, you want to hear it perform that way. Um, and it, I don't know. Some of those things threw me, but otherwise they sounded fantastic. And Do you think a big part of that is because Matt Skiba is now in permanently in place of Tom? And that's like a big change because they played their older stuff, but yeah. it's Matt singing the Tom stuff. Do you think that's like the major part of that? I mean, I don't know. Maybe that had something to do with it, but... But maybe they just wanted to to just change some things up. I know some performers will do that um, when they do live performances anyway. Right. But they'll you know they'll just sound a little different from recordings or, or what have you. Um, I'm, so I'm not entirely sure that was the idea behind changing things, but. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just, you're singing along with it, and then all of a sudden they do, like, a different note, and it's like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. Okay. But it still sounded fine. Okay. Overall, you approve, though. 
Yes, and of course, Travis Barker was phenomenal on the drums. He's a machine. He really is. Yeah. Um, I will say this. Uh, when The first morning when we got in, we got in a little bit early, like before the crowd, and we checked out merch, like right as the gates opened, too. Like when pe- like there's only like five, like one person in front of us that took forever, but still that gave us time to look at merch. Um, we noticed the Blink-182 merch. Uh, Gresham got this awesome Blink-182 hoodie that looks really good. And all- Blink-182's merch, they have one of the most foul T-shirts yeah, that that you would never <laughs> expect Blink-182 to have. It's This is like, I can't even, there's no way I'm going to say out loud what it was. Like, list George Carlin's seven dirty words <laughs> and then repeat them over and over again on the back of this t-shirt in big, bold letters. I just don't know how anyone could wear it out in public. Like, no, if you want to get the shirt, fine. But... First of all, why pay money for nothing but a string of curse words just on your back? It really is like it is the desperate for attention t-shirt. Like you want to be known as that edgy guy. I mean, I'm all for if you want to express yourself with some some colorful language, fine, go ahead. But it was just a lot. And some of those words were really big. Like the font changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) It was not, it was not minimal. Like you did not have to get close to notice what these words were. It wasn't like, it wasn't just the F word in big bold letters. It was that and much, much more. Yeah, it was. And and it's like you said, I did not expect it from blink. Right. Yeah. I think that's part of it too. So like, like of all bands, right. Like when even Slipknot would go, what the heck? Yeah, it was it it's was a lot. Something. Yeah, so it was that's also expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, merch at an I mean, merch at any festival, but still, yeah, you're paying that much for a shirt you're not going to be able to wear everywhere. I mean, you could, you just you might get kicked you out. Get, you're not, you you are not get, going to you are not going into Chuck E. Cheese with that shirt on. You could try. <laughs> <laughs> you are not going into church with that shirt on. Oh no. <laughs> exactly there you're not going to a wedding with that t-shirt on oh but why not yeah if you want to get kicked out of the wedding early so that we have to stick around that long i guess that's a good reason <laughs> good advice for everyone by the way if you have to go to a wedding but don't have to sit through the whole thing just wear something awful and get asked to leave oh my gosh terrible that'll work advice. every time terrible advice and that also, that way, if you didn't get him a gift, it won't matter because they won't remember you for not getting a gift. They'll just remember you for ruining, almost ruining their wedding. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, we'll put my more life tips later on. We'll jump into another headline or Slipknot. Um, it was awesome to see them again. I, I mean, we just saw them two weeks ago. Gretchen and I saw them both on the Not This Road Show. Sound great. They're still on fire. Everyone's running around having a good time. It was awesome to see like this was probably the arguably the biggest crowd i saw them with Mm -hmm. with louder than life too it just felt like the crowd was bigger for this one and there was just a sea of people and everyone was there for slipknot at the end of the night no like it wasn't a situation where all right let's leave early we're not really interested no everyone stayed yeah pretty much it was intense so that was awesome what did you think of slipknot it's aftershock i mean phenomenal again exactly yeah i know yeah. it's hard to really reiterate that stuff again like they killed it again it was awesome to see in here yeah one little thing we want to i want to bring up um over the weekend after aftershock obviously Corey taylor got married oh yeah i saw that yep they had a private wedding um they kept it low-key or i shouldn't say low-key they kept it under the radar yeah. for obvious reasons just because they probably didn't want people to know because they might try to flood into the wedding to see it and ask questions Mm-hmm. So it was awesome to see that, though, too. So I know I haven't um, responded to him yet about that, but I do want to wish congratulations to Corey and Alicia. They are very happy. They are hardworking people. They are def- they definitely work together, and I want nothing but the best for them. Yeah, well, good for them. Exactly. And to all the psychotic people who are upset that Corey's off the market and don't like this woman because she's with Corey – Y'all never had a chance. (laughs) That's one of the reasons. (laughs) Y'all never had a chance. Like, come on. There's there's no nice way to say that. I agree. (laughs) Number two, this woman is like literally one of the sweetest, nicest women I've met, like in any type of like work ethic, like in this business. She's great. 
you have nothing to hate on. Nothing. So well, I don't know. That's they just can find me. reasons to hate on. I, you have no legitimate reasons to hate on. Well, yeah. That's, that's what I'm going for. So I was like, gonna say uh, they can find reasons, but yeah. Um, we will not name names, we will not call people out. Uh, like Gretch and I are in the aftershock group on Facebook, which has like tens of thousands of people just for discussion and things like that. Um, there are some people every now and then are like, we're saying, I'm so desperate to meet Corey. I just want to have his attention. So he'll marry me. And this was before the wedding, obviously. Mm. Like, do you really think that's going to pan out? Really? You're like, yes. He's going to look at that and be like, ah, yes. That's what you I in want the third right row. There. You in the third row with Slipknot written across your bare chest. Meet me backstage oh. now. That's what I want. Get out of here. Awful. Mm. So. Awesome to see Slipknot. And the third headliner, Tool. I know you're not crazy about Tool. I just don't get the appeal. Fair I mean... <sighs> no, that's a fair... Yeah. That's a big... That's <laughs> okay, that's totally fine. Um, I'll just speak for this. I have one interesting feat, feat about Tool's performance at Aftershock. That was the first show where they performed some of the new songs from the new album this year. Mm. They opened with the title track Fear Inoculum, which has now made another Billboard record. It's the longest song to hit Billboard's Hot 100 at 10 minutes, Mm. which is very impressive, you know. And and they also played the song Numa, which is a big deal, too. People loved it. Everyone loved the set, I think. Tool was great. Mm -hmm. Um, There were so many good things about it, lived up to the hype. They sounded amazing. It was a different set that I had seen them from a few months back, understandably. But I think I just I loved it. That's me being biased because I am a Tool fan. If you're not a Tool fan, you're just gonna stare at it cross-eyed and go, "Okay, I, I get it." I mean, the light show was really cool. Yeah, they had the full video board in effect, showing lots and lots of different stuff. So it was awesome for that. So one of the cool things that happened also was Jose Mangan um, introduced Hailstorm in a very special way. Where they, he didn't like, here's Hailstorm, and then left. No, Jose actually just called out Hailstorm. Everyone in Hailstorm, get out here right now. And after Hailstorm stepped on the stage, a fifth, another person came out with a big old birthday cake and has celebrated Lizzie's birthday. And everyone in the crowd and Jose sang happy birthday to Lizzie Hale. I got it on camera. (laughs) (laughs) I have to admit, I have not seen that before, especially at a big festival. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Lizzie Hale had the best comments right before they started playing. Um, mm-hmm. She said, no one ever sings to me. That was nice. Aw. And I was like, yeah, that's actually correct. Yep. So that yeah. was another cool moment. Hailstorm again killed it. I mean, oh, I don't yeah. know. Always. If, if Hailstorm's less than 100%, that's call for serious concern. Mm-hmm. So they that were great. Good. Yeah, so they were fantastic again. Um, some other bands that we both noticed, um, I'm just looking at the schedule right now. Bring Me the Horizon was there. They sounded good. I thought mm-hmm. they were fine. They had their full stage presentation with dancers, smoke guns, the video board behind them, everyone in the suits. They really go all out now for their live show and it's a big step up. Right. So that was pretty cool. Are there any bands that you remember Gretchen seeing that you really enjoyed? Well, I'm looking at the the lineup and it's missing a certain singer that wasn't there <laughs> tell us more Gretchen now that you have it on your mind <laughs> Poppy I was so freaking excited to see Poppy and she wasn't there but she did have a good reason so um, we found out because of the dangerous and serious wildfires in Los Angeles where Poppy was coming, she could not make it up to Sacramento. Like, literally, detours and highways were shut down. There was no way for her to make it in time. And she was opening the main stage on Friday morning. Yeah, so, she I mean, at least it perform. wasn't, like, a no-show or something. Exactly. It was not unprofessionalism. It was not no, being a diva. It was, it was a safety thing. It was literally but... impossible for her to get there. But it was still so sad and disappointed. When I I was the one that had was found out first because I was yeah. in the photo pit with other photographers waiting. And the crowd, people were there early waiting. And someone from security came up and told us, Poppy's not here. She didn't show up. So we're not going to have any band right now. We're just going to wait here until Phil, and, Phil Anselmo and the illegals show up. So that's it. Then he walked away. <laughs> so I looked at other photographers go, oh. 
And at the time, mm-hmm. we weren't told about the f- why, about like it was the fire situation. That's why she couldn't make it. We just didn't know if she was a no-show or not. Yeah. So I looked around in the crowd, and then I saw Gretchen pe- peeking over the barricade, and she goes, what's going on? And I told her, and then we met back up after outside the photo pit and VIP, and we had our sad faces on, and mm-hmm. that was it. sad. It was mm-hmm. disappointing because we were both very excited. Yes. Poppy is for a niche audience and will yes. not be for everyone. We totally get that. But Gretchen and I are the niche audience, and we wanted to see it. I was about to say, I just wanted to see the spectacle. Oh, yeah. We, we were expecting everything from Barbie doll and Care Bears all the way to decapitations and gore. Yeah, I was. I was, just and we didn't know what it. to expect, but we wanted to see what was going to happen. And yeah. we, unfortunately, we will have to wait. So I'll say it was the whole curiosity thing. Yeah. So unfortunately, that just didn't happen. So no. I, I brought my girlfriend to Sacramento, and she didn't even get to see the person she wanted to, and she had to babysit me while I was extremely sick. <sighs> Dang. <laughs> I am failing as a boyfriend. I totally acknowledge that. I apologize. Yeah, you fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for other bands that we did get to see, you got to see Dropkick Murphys this time, correct? I did. And I What's really you? like them. Right. I think they are great. Dropkick Murphys are a band that should be at more of these DWP festivals. They are a sound that is unique and different. They get yeah. the crowd really riled up in the good way. And it's fun music to just stand there and listen to and enjoy the weather and just love what you're hearing. That's like the positive type of sound that you need at festivals like this. I mean, it's just, they're they're a lot of fun. Um, they are. They're, they're more like... I don't know, dance a little jig type of music. Exactly. Um, While headbanging. Exactly. (laughs) And I remember leaning over to Gretchen and our friends, Lizzie and Trevor, who are there too. We'll talk about more of them later because like they're our photographer friends from Florida who have done podcast episodes with before. Um, I leaned over to all three of them and go, this is what Boston sounds like all the time. All the time. Yes. It's just this music playing all the time. (laughs) So... Um, other than that, like we were saw a lot of other different bands. We missed a lot too, because either I was sick or we were backstage doing interviews or it was just hard to get to. Um, yeah. I, we got, to, I got to see highly suspect for the first time in a few years. I know Gretchen's not super familiar with them, mm-hmm. but it was very cool to see those guys again live. They still have the sound. They still have that. They have such a attitude and charisma by, behind them. It's like, they really do not care about appearances or gimmicks they are there just to perform the way they want to perform and i really respect that i was gonna say i think that was the only one that i didn't see that you saw yeah i think you sat behind for that one yeah and i just stayed i went to shoot and then i ran back because i think that was on saturday and that was like the start of the downturn for me before i started feeling a little ill and i we had to get rid for interviews and things like that. I was about to say, I think I was setting up for an interview. Because I think you were doing that some... because I was sick and like I that was like to help save time because we had to like. Well, really a band got that. pushed up. Right. Like exactly. it, they were supposed to be later. And yeah, so we were. Like, Can you do to... it now? <laughs> exactly, and to, we'll talk about them too. We got to see Dead Posey again, which is a new band that Gretchen and I are really into. Yes. Yeah, Very we got to so. we got to interview them again. Like I still have to go through the video and audio. Hopefully, everything's good this time because the interview from Louder Than Life was lost because of bad audio, just so much background interference. Yeah. Dead Posey's a new band from LA, um, female lead singer. Gretchen said the same thing that Lizzie did, that <laughs> like a brunette Taylor Momsen. Yes. Very similar sound attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, just the sound. lyrics in the music is not are, are not as suggestive, to put it politely. Mm-hmm. But Dead Posey have a great raw rock vibe, and she yeah. has a great voice behind her too. It's like very, she's a very good front woman, and they're going to do a tour in Europe. They have an EP out now. They're working on another EP that should hopefully be out relatively soon, and they'll be working on a full album throughout the course of next year. Yay! So we're both, that. yeah, and that was one of the bands we were interviewing. We're both very happy about that. We got to talk to them a little bit after the interview too, just to kind of shoot the breeze very good people that aren't yeah. crazy or full of themselves. And before we go through some more bands, um, I just want to talk about, cause we were in media and the difference between the media area where people are working at every other festival and concert and everything like that. And act- aftershock aftershocks, the last festival of the year in the, in the States aftershock mm-hmm. is a party 
for media. This is where all the publicists and bands and touring crews just kind of hang out in media together and just like enjoy life. There's an open bar at media. There's like actual lounge chairs and giant Jenga and cornhole and just stuff to do and sit around and enjoy each other's company. Like literally, it's a big giant casual party for everyone just to associate and shoot the breeze and talk. It sounds awesome, but when you're crammed and trying to work in a tent and yeah. like trying to do interviews around people, there is so much going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, a ton. <laughs> so it was cool to see so many people. Um, like a good example, this Chris Motionless or Motionless and White was there. Um, they performed I mean, Motionless and White. For so long. Exactly. Motionless and White performed Friday. Um, yeah. We talked to him and interviewed them at Louder Than Life. Um, like, like he did his interviews all by himself again, like he did our, like at least a solid two hours of interviews with all the media. And then he just hung out with some of the other members of the band and family members and just stayed there for like, I want to say until like seven or eight at night. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was there really late. Like every time yeah. I turned around, he's still there. Like, he that's kind having, of cool though. It is. It mm -hmm. was like, that's kind of the attitude. It is at Aftershock and Media. It's just that everyone like to cap off the year. It's a get together of festivals anyway, like a lot of bands that don't get to see each other on the road that much and finally mm -hmm. get to reconnect. And at Aftershock, it's a big event. Like, cause even PR and publicists and touring crews will like come out for Aftershock also just to meet each other too. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's kind of cool about that. That was a big cough. Sorry. <laughs> I have to remember to go through all these and cut the breaks. That'll be fine though. So mm -hmm. going back to some of the other bands, um, Gretchen, I don't, I, don't believe you saw Corn. I think you stayed behind. Um, I was off to the side. Like I heard them. I didn't okay. see the performance, but I heard them. Gotcha. A lot of people loved Corn, and I admit they had a great set. Um, mm -hmm. I literally physically could only stay for three songs because that was on Sunday, and that was on the side on the cola stage, which is the secondary stage of the two main stages. The dust was so bad at that point at sunset that I was literally coughing so hard that I got a headache. Yeah, it, that one was definitely bad. Yeah, on the third day, the there was stage. so, on the third day, there was so much dust in the air. Like when Gretchen and I were walking in, we just saw like a physical cloud over the stage, over the crowd at that stage. Mm -hmm. Like I have pictures online on Instagram, on the stories too, if you're curious. Like the dust was that severe. And I know I'm not the only one that had serious problems with it, but it's just, <clears throat> You can hear me coughing now. It's just mm -hmm. so unavoidable at aftershock, and that's kind of unfortunate because Corn really brought it. I mean, Corn. Yeah. This was kind of an end, of, like end of the celebration type thing, because Corn had a lot of family members and friends in the photo pit and like at the soundboard too. So it was a big special event for them, also, mm -hmm. which was really cool. So other than that, I'm just trying to look over the, some of the things. We didn't get to see certain bands like Marilyn Manson, Stone Temple Pilots. I wanted to shoot Rob Zombie so bad. But at the same time, I was just too sick. And I heard Rob Zombie yeah. had a great set. I was about to say, you were feeling really bad by that point. Yeah, and I literally could not breathe. So yeah. there was a lot of cool stuff to see and shoot. The grounds were great. We got, they did have the Zippo tents. We got another lighter. That was nice. Yay! Um, also, <laughs> since it's California, um, they had a lot of pot and marijuana specific shops and Dude, like, they had an entire section it was like literally like <laughs> that sectioned off area just for the pot products and like brand stuff yep. at the park mm -hmm. so like they had like beer vendors and like beer special tents and things like that like for coors light and monster energy has their own tents and state and little things well they had like pot specific ones at the at aftershock and that was the first time i had saw that oh really yeah so it was kind of cool just to see how they're adapting to some of stuff like that too. And it was pretty open. Um, some of the band, there was a lot of bands on the side stage too that a lot of people really complimented and said were great. We did not get to see the hue, which people raved about at Aftershock and are still and still are. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have been able to see them on Sunday. Again, I was too sick. We both, Gretchen and I, got to see Sum 41 on the side stage. They closed out the side stage on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. I love Sum 41. The lights were bonkers and the crowd was a little rowdy. Yeah, just a little And not bit. in the good way. And not in no. the good way. And Sum 41 was great, though. But I'm, the reason I'm bringing it up that way is because when you're going to talk about some of the unfortunate parts of Aftershock, the crowd this year. I've often said Aftershock has one of the best laid-back crowds of all the festivals. This year was an exception because putting Sum 41 aside, the crowd at Sum 41 aside, there was like one jerk who was way too drunk 
big like post frat boy syndrome where he's still trying to be in college when he's clearly not <laughs> that type of attitude like he tried to pour alcohol into gretchen's mouth and when gretchen said no the guy goes why not yeah he that was, type of he loser. was about to he was about to get a fist to the face yeah so there were i'm not kidding when i say this and this is a big situation hundreds of reported pickpockets at aftershock mm -hmm. many cell phones and wallets were stolen yeah and it's not a coincidence there were people doing this left and right and and these big crowds where everyone's sandwiched and starting together it's a serious problem and that probably happens at most festivals like little stuff like this but this was a severe situation where like it was being reported yeah. since on friday and it kept happening where hundreds of people were being pickpocketed yeah it was it was nuts the <clears throat> the amount of people saying my phone was stolen and like sometimes if if a person gets a little too intoxicated they may just accidentally leave their phone somewhere right um you know that could be a case for some of these but the fact that multiple people are reporting that their phones were stolen i mean that's that's not everyone forgot their phone <laughs> yeah that's there's no way no. and that's unfortunate too because like aftershock usually has a it's a nice despite all the dust that's me that has that issue it's a very nice park in a good area yeah. in sacramento so you can't blame it on just the location it's i'm not kidding when i say there are people that probably walked out with like seven to ten cell phones stuffed down their pants oh. and that's yes. messed up to say and that is completely accurate yeah and it sucks i wish I, that's the type of thing how do you tell how how could security help in that especially when it's dark out well, yeah, and that's the problem is even the like even if you felt someone take your phone out of your pocket, the second you turn around, it's so dark and so so congested with people that you don't know who it was. Exactly. You, you can't see the person whether they're standing there acting like they're an audience member or they hauled butt. Right. You know, uh, you can't I. I don't want to say this is like an orchestrated event where like one person or a group of people actually bought tickets and went into just to do that. But the fact that this was hundreds of people reporting like stuff missing like that, say yeah. half of them really were just saying it was stolen. That still mm -hmm. means dozens and dozens of people got pickpocketed at this event. And that's terrible. Yeah. It's, oh God, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. So. Hopefully, to anyone listening, if your stuff got lost or stolen, hopefully you can return it. I know Aftershock and the park do a good job with lost and found, as yeah. most of the festivals do. Here's hoping you get your stuff back because that's rough. You do not want to. You bought a ticket to see Tool or uh, Rob Zombie or Slipknot or Hailstorm or whoever, and you end up getting your phone or wallet stolen. Nobody wants yeah. that. No, that's not cool. So one thing I. To move on to a different subject, just because that's kind of a down moment, but I did want to address that because that was a serious thing. Um, Gretchen and I got to see our good friends, Trevor and Lizzie. Uh, they're photographers from Florida. They're always at Welcome to Rockville. They're at Sonic Temple too. Uh, we got to hang out with them, especially on Sunday night. We went to dinner with them after the show. They saved me big time when I got carted off to media when I was like, or to uh, medic, medical. Um, mm -hmm. They carried my stuff back for me to the hotel which was huge yeah. which was a big thanks to them so i bought them dinner on sunday night to make up for it um one thing i'm gonna put not put them on the spot but i'm glad i could just call this out for him um gretchen and i both both missed baby metal i wasn't even approved to shoot baby metal however I, gretchen and i both still wanted to see the spectacle mm -hmm. we just couldn't do it i was too sick trevor saw it he hated every second of it and i think that's <laughs> hilarious oh my gosh <laughs> Trevor went on a good rant at us about how he hated baby metal. He hated the choreography. He hated the sing-songy parts of it. He didn't get it. And the thing is, like, baby metal's new album just came out. I did a review of it. It was fine for what it does. But at the same time, baby metal's a live show. That's the reason you go see it. Right. And that's what I think was the big part of it. Because, like, the band behind baby metal, uh, oh, man, the commie band, I believe, they were great. That's what other people are saying. Even Trevor said that. It's just some people, people can't get past the what Trevor said. It was pretty much like Britney Spears or Backstreet Boys in front of power metal. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know about that. 
That's, but, that's an interesting way to describe it. Right. At the same time, though, I get why it's not everyone's cup of tea. Totally well, yeah. get that. So that's another band that was there. They, they were back in me doing a little bit of media, too. They were. I was going to say, I remember bit. looking up at one point and there they were. Yeah. I was like, oh. All right. Yeah, Sue and Mo were there. And they were just walking around being escorted. They might have only done like, I think they only did like a couple for some of the bigger events. But yeah. still, it was cool to see them there too. Like they're working, they're doing the full tour. They're really into it. So Gretchen and I will hopefully see Baby Metal in the future someday, just so we can experience it. If yes. we like it, if we don't like it, that's up for debate. After the, We'll find out then. But at the same time, that's something we both want to experience. Right. And um, one other thing just we'll end this with the bands that we saw at aftershock um gretchen i don't know how much you saw of day to remember uh, i mean i saw the the songs that you shot for so exactly the three we shot we stayed yeah. for the first three while still filling up for it on sunday yeah. and again a day to remember puts on such a great show they are the best example of a band who knows how to play to a crowd get everyone's attention without sacrificing the quality of the music right they know how to pose, put in the right spot, get people riled up. They have streamers, confetti cannons, pyro. There were a lot of bands with streamers. Yeah, there were. Blink-182 <laughs> had a ton. Blink-182 had full aliens. They were like sending out to the crowd to crowd surf. Dude, that was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty awesome, to be fair. Inflatable aliens. Yeah, so there was a lot of cool things like that. Aftershock bands, by and large, really stepped it up. I mean... Gresham and I didn't get to see every band. I don't know if we saw any full stinkers. Um, I was about to say, I, I can't think of any. I can't think of any either. I can't, because th- like, um, I walked out of Louder Than Life after a, f- a band or two going, oh, that was worthless. Why did I even go into that photo pit? I did not yeah. say that for Aftershock. I mean, I know a lot of people complained about Marilyn Manson, but we didn't hear We didn't him. stay for them. Yeah. So yeah. We, I can't really speak. Um, yeah, a lot people of people said he sounded Marilyn. drunk. Yeah, a oh. lot of people were saying, well, the sky's blue. So, you know, oh. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that politely. So other than that, there was a lot of good things that happened in Aftershock. It would have been better if I didn't ruin it from being sick. Gretchen probably would have mm-hmm. enjoyed it a lot more, too. You didn't ruin it. I ruined it. Let's no. call it like it is. You can't help health concerns. Well, regardless, I ruined it. So other than that, Aftershock... <laughs> A lot of people loved it. There were some unfortunate events that happened. That does not deter from the overall majority that this was a very successful year at a, at a very fun event with a killer lineup. I still mm-hmm. stand by. This was my favorite lineup of all 2019 for festivals in America. Hmm. My opinion, but I thought this was the best. I'd have to look back at the other ones. Right. And that's fair too. Yeah. So that being said... What's next for DWP festivals? Well, I can answer that one word, Metallica. (laughs) And that's a big deal because while we were at, or I shouldn't say this, the day before um, that Aftershock started, that Thursday, this past Thursday, Metallica had a press conference with DWP stating that Metallica will be performing as the headliner for two nights of every three-night festival for Sonic Temple, Welcome to Rockville, Epicenter, Aftershock, and Louder Than Life. They will be performing two different sets on two different nights at each of these festivals throughout 2020. And I think it's really cool that it's like two different sets for, right. for all of the yeah. festivals. Right. And this is a big deal because it's going to be Metallica XX, which is supposed to be the anniversary, if I'm correct. I could be wrong about this um, now that I think about it. I don't know what the anniversary is for the Black Album, but I could be wrong about that. But I know this is a big deal just coming up because Metallica is going to be doing two different sets. I don't know what songs are going to play on each night. I highly mm-hmm. doubt they'll be playing St. Anger <laughs> all the way through on one of those nights. Boy, do I feel bad for the crowd that gets that. However, <laughs> yeah, um, this is a big deal. And I think this is a huge mark. Like this is already proven to be a huge marketing design. People are already buying tickets. If I'm correct, they've already had like a cap of sellouts, like for the limit they've like released before mm-hmm. and only one band's been announced. So, you know, they did something right. I was about to say, I think Aftershock 2020. Uh, yeah. Aftershock yep. 2020 is saying that the VIP weekend pass um, is almost sold out. Right. And that's what, sorry to bounce back and forth. Also for your money, um, Aftershock, I think, has the best VIP. Yeah. 
It does. By far. They have the best VIP area. So if you go to Aftershock and wondering if the VIP is worth it or not, that's the one festival where VIP is definitely worth it. They have lounge mm -hmm. chairs and like outdoor seating, actual seats in the park where you can just sit there and watch video boards and relax. Honestly, the bathrooms alone are worth VIP. They actually have real bathroom stations. Yeah. I mean, they're not like, you know, regular bathrooms, but they're no, like, but like trailers. They're actually, yeah, like they're actual physical trailers, like that you can flush. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're not just outhouses. So yes. that alone. So that I, alone is worth yeah. the So cost. if you go to Aftershock next year, look into VIP. It's worth the extra money because you get a lot more out of it. And you also don't have to wait as long you in lines, like especially if if you do plan to drink. The lines for alcohol are way shorter. The lines for food are shorter. Mm -hmm. You have your own special merch tent. And I know that's available at, I think, all uh, of the uh, festivals do they that. They are. I'm just saying Aftershock, yeah. hands down, has the best VIP of every festival just the, we've been to. Just the setup of it. Yeah. And um, I've thought that better. for the last year, too. But now that Gretchen's seen it, too, I think she could agree. Because she's been to Welcome to Rockville, which had a very good VIP setup. It did. Welcome to Rockville had a very good VIP setup. No knocking that. I don't know what it'll be next year for Daytona, but I'm very excited they will not be at a park. They'll be at an actual speedway. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. And like Gretchen's a photographer too. She's shooting shows. I know she's going to try to apply for some of these as well. Um, so. Yeah, like looking back and like recap and stuff like that, Sonic Temple was both of our favorites this past year to shoot and work. Mainly yeah. because it was an arena. It was the Major League Soccer Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Shooting and like just being in an arena for that setting is so much nicer. Yeah, it is. I just, it's just I, far it's, more enjoyable. And I get that that's a personal experience thing. Some people loved Aftershock, some people loved Rockville. Totally get that. For, I just, in our opinion, it just the, uh, makes it more feel like a big event. To see a band like System of a Down or Foo Fighters in a giant arena with 40,000 people, you know, and now yeah. it's going to be Metallica. That's enormous. Yeah. So that being said, there's so many cool things going on for 2020 planned already. I know if I'm correct, I'm basing this off the past five, six years of me working these events. The full lineups for uh, Welcome to Rockville, Sonic Temple, and Epicenter should drop in December or January. Should. Okay. So that's when they usually are all dropped. And there's going to be a different, there's going to be that extra headliner for every Saturday of these festivals mm -hmm. to see who they are. There's people speculating ACDC with Brian Johnson. That's a big rumor. People are speculating Slipknot because they didn't do any of the spring ones. There's a lot of different rumors. There's a lot of stuff going on. We'll find out when we get there. I just want to add, it's awesome to see Metallica do this for 2020. It'll be the year of Metallica. Also, I was 100% right in saying that Metallica was going to do this for 2020. And to everyone that added me and comments me, uh, Metallica has nothing to do with the DWP event. It's going to be something different. I was right. And you were all wrong. You feel better about that? Yes. I'm sick. And this is what makes me feel better. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Gretchen agrees with me, everyone. We're both on the same boat together. She's just as of happy about this as I am, aren't you, Gretchen? Sure. Exactly. That means yes. She said yes. <laughs> that means yes. Anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed our Aftershock rundown. Ho what are your thoughts, though, if, like, listening to this, what do you think about the Metallica setup? What do you think about the 2020 situation? I mean, Metallica 2020... It's going to be a big deal. They're going to perform five different big festivals throughout the year in America, let alone any other touring. I don't know what the situation is going to be if they're going to try to make up the Australia, New Zealand tour that got canceled due to James Hetfield's health situation. Hopefully mm -hmm. he'll be all better by spring. I brought up to like when I was talking to Trevor and Lizzie and you about this, um, maybe they could do it in the summer because that'll be winter for Australia. So it's totally possible. Mm hmm. But again, that's just speculation. I have nothing to base that on. Because right now, I do feel like Australia and New Zealand kind of got the shaft for understandable yeah. reasons. But like now they're announcing all this stuff for 2020. It's like, what about us down under? You know, that's what I'm saying. And shortly after they yeah. you know, canceled Pretty, things. Yeah, two weeks after they, can't, they, found, they broke the news that like the tour was going to be canceled. For yeah. Metallica and Slipknot down under, they announced that, yeah, 2020 is the year of Metallica for DWP. So, like, oh, I mean, yeah. I, I 
we understand that this has obviously been in the works for a while. This was not just po- made an idea over the course of a day. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. So that being said, this is pretty much the end of the festival coverage for the year for us, for podcasts. And this was just our time to like really talk about our experiences with it. We know a lot of people to like showed up for it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed what we talked about, like our thoughts of some of these bands live, what we thought about the festivals overall. If you're listening to this overseas, we understand that compared to some of the European festivals, these are nothing. However, Gretchen and I have never been to a European festival, so we aren't really familiar with, familiar with that. Yeah. But at the same time, let us know your thoughts and let us know your thoughts about Metallica 2020. A lot of people really are going to be talking about Metallica because after they play Epicenter, a week later is Welcome to Rock, and a week later is Sonic Temple. So after Epicenter's inaugural, the first one of the year in mid, the first weekend of May, then people are going to find out how good Metallica is and what to expect. And that's when people are going to start talking more and more about it, especially for Sonic Temple. Mm-hmm. So. Let us know your thoughts about Metallica 2020. Would you want to see them at a festival setting? Would you want to see them, period? Do you still think they have it? Do you think they might have new music coming out, actually? I don't know. Who knows? Metallica does whatever they want. They are Metallica. I was about to say, they can. Yeah, exactly. They're making their own whiskey right now, so that's probably another priority of them, too. Well, yeah. So... And that being said, thank you all for listening. Uh, Thank you for listening to us talk about festivals the past few weeks. Uh, it's fun for Gretchen and I. It's fun for me to work and like be a photographer and actually get to talk to bands and things like this. I want to try to keep posting more coverage for all this. Let us know like if there's any topics you want us to catch and talk about for the next few weeks. Um, one of the things we'll be probably talking about next episode, um, or just bring things to bring up, are more current events and news, not just festival coverage. So that being said, Gretchen, if you'd like to say anything or add anything or talk about your channel and what you have coming up, please go ahead. Um. If I knew what I had coming up, I'd be sure to plug it. Okay, so Gretchen's going to have a lot of fun videos coming up. Um, please check Absolutely. Out Go Gretchen on, at Go, check out Go Gretchen on YouTube. <laughs> Gretchen and I were going to film a video at the hotel on Sunday morning, but I was, again, too sick. So it'll probably be coming out in a few more weeks when I go see Gretchen again. We'll be filming yeah. a video for her channel. And when that posts, I'll share it out with everyone. I won't, I won't spoil anything yet, but I'm pretty sure people will be interested in what we're doing. Woo! Exactly. So <laughs> thank you again for everyone tuning in. Uh, check it. Please keep spreading the word about this channel. Even if you just share it on Spotify or Spreaker or Stitcher or iTunes or app, I shouldn't say iTunes, Apple, Google podcast, just share it in any way that helps us a ton. We're still trying to get this YouTube channel up to a thousand subs so we can get it monetized and really start sharing it out. Also, again, please check out the rocks main channel just broke 40,000 subs over the, uh, this past week, which is a big deal for me want to keep that going and later this month you can expect a long video on 10 like horror based music videos in rock so that'll be another fun thing we're doing so again thank you so much for tuning in thank you gretchen for joining me on this one and we will see you next time bye